I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Latin America. You can hear in my voice, we've been on a plane for two days. But we're here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. We stayed last night right back here at the Anselmo in San Telmo, near the port uh, here in the city. Like, we're right in the city in part of the very old part. And then uh, we've been hanging out on this square. I am just setting out for my first morning of recording. It is 11 degrees Celsius. That's 52 for your Fahrenheit people. And... Uh, that's a really pleasant temperature if you're not used to Nicaragua. So I have a nice coat on. I am bundled up. I am in jeans. And we're heading out to do some exploring of the city. So let's get right to it. All right, before we set off and go too far, I was going to point out so we stayed for our one night in the Curio Collection by Hilton because it's just easy. You, when we're first coming into a city, fly in, stay in a hotel by Hilton, they have something just managed. We're moving to an Airbnb today. We like being in part of the city, like being a part of it, like as people live, but first night, it's just a lot to deal with sometimes. Uh, so last night, you can see this bar right behind me on the corner. It's really hard to see on the screen right here. Uh, we went live music, got some really good food. It's about $25. Uh, we paid with credit card. It is difficult to pay with credit card here, so be aware you got to check. A lot of places won't take uh, credit cards, and trans uh, uh, changing money is challenging. So there's a lot you got to deal with. I got to show how many people are just hanging out on the square this morning. Just look at these crowds. I have really a lot of people. It is probably pushing 10 o'clock. Uh, it's about, yeah, it's 10 o'clock on the nose as I say that here near the port. So you can look up the uh, Curio by Hilton if you want to see exactly where we are on a map. I'm not going to bring it up on the screen right this moment because it's so easy to find, so identifiable. I'm going to walk by the restaurant here and get a. It was excellent. So. You guys aren't really interested in seeing me though. Let's flip this camera around. Let's just start a walking tour and go see as much as we can. We're gonna be staying deeper in the city. We're gonna be staying in Palermo the rest of the time that we're here. So this is my chance to record at the port. You guys are gonna wanna see this. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous area. Let's flip it. All right, first things first, you're gonna notice tall buildings. This is a massive city and you feel it the moment you get here. It is also, as people have asked, a city built very much in a European style. Oh, we have a cute little cafe right there. Cafes everywhere. Shops always, so many people out on the square. Nothing going on, just everyone hanging out. And the Iceland artisanal ice cream on the corner. So, People asked me in the notes when as soon as they heard I was coming here, the things people are interested in most, cost of living, which is gonna take me a little bit to work out. Uh, but I mean, from our first day, very good. And the second thing is, does it feel European? Well, you're gonna see it on my walks and you're gonna explore with me, but absolutely super ultra, European. If you didn't know you were in Latin America, you would really struggle to figure it out. This is a museum on the right that we're going past. And then this is a church. Oh my gosh. So this is about as European as European can get. Everything from the way the streets are designed to the way that people dress and behave. To the food. It is incredibly, incredibly European. Now, of course, it's always mentioned as being the Paris of the South, but there's also a very strong, he's about to saw right behind me, so I'm zipping past him. There's also a very strong feeling of Italy, of course, the population being predominantly Italian. And I would say of Eastern Europe, 
having lived in Romania and Ukraine, having visited a bit of the far east of Europe, which, oh, look at the flowers in that building. Ooh, and the tile over here. Just everything, everything is so beautiful. And notice there's train tracks through the city. But Eastern Europe gets quite a bit colder than Western Europe. Italy and France and Spain, the countries that Argentina is often culturally uh, associated with, are warmer. And here, it's a little bit on the chillier side, being in the Western Hemisphere, even though if you were to flip uh, the globe around, Buenos Aires mostly lines up with Dallas, Texas. So winters here are very similar to winters in Dallas, uh, which is not bad, right? But can get snow, but it makes large portions of the year very similar to Eastern Europe in, in how it feels. And so uh, a lot of buildings and a lot of lifestyles are going to naturally have a tendency towards Eastern Europe because they just have more similar weather. Here, buses rule public transportation. You can see them everywhere. I'm told the public transit network is amazing. I plan to check it out, but we're not there yet. We literally got in last night. So this is my first out and about walk in the city. I need to check a map and make sure I know where I am. I don't want to get lost or go somewhere dumb. I want to make sure I'm walking somewhere good for you guys. Let's get a little bit of clear shot here while I, while I can. And a little bit more modern that way. And uh, come over this way. Check out those cool buildings over there. Definitely buildings that give you the feeling of, of Paris. And these big wide boulevards. And this is, so this long thing here with the barrier in the middle, this is a bus stop. So the buses actually elevate and you have a platform to load from and spots for the different buses. So they make the buses feel a lot more like a train system. It is very organized and clear. It's gonna be really cool to show off once we uh, get a chance to. Okay, I hopped across the street. That was the corner that we were standing on. Now this is a city that you would compare to a Mexico City, a Sao Paulo, a New York City in size and scope so this is a world to itself a city larger than most countries and so it's going to naturally have a completely different feel than most places in latin america that we have been on the show for that reason alone you could live in buenos aires never have a car never leave the city and explore it for forever truly a huge city And my understanding is it is essentially flat. We're by the waterfront and flying over the region. The region is completely flat all around it, making it extremely walkable. It's famously a city of cafes, which is both a European thing and a Latin American thing. Somehow not a Nicaraguan thing. I, I got me there. every one of these streets you absolutely could be in europe we will know more over the next few weeks as we explore a lot more but yeah i think we can already answer the question does it feel like europe yeah if you're looking for the european experience gosh you're you're good right like you're just gonna you're gonna fit right in like look at these buildings in front of us and a lot of construction going on. Those are some beautiful high rises going up. I think those are over at the port. I don't know how we actually get to the water. Oh, look at the buildings going along the waterfront. 
Whew, which way do we go, people? I'm pretty sure to the left, but just getting a little bit of a look. All right, let's head up. Not as much to see up close right here. Oh, but look at these must be old warehouses against the old port. Those are awesome old buildings over there. This is a super cool area for sure, but the buildings that I'm walking against are very drab. So, so it's not perfect. Those old warehouses are very cool and those new high rises going up are, are gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna teleport forward a little bit. See what we find. All right, I'm getting a little bit of a view as I cross the street. So I'm gonna show the view into the city. Lots of plants on balconies. That's very European for sure. There's broad walkways on both sides. I mean, these sidewalks are wide. All right, we're gonna zip forward. Ooh, a little bit of a view there. managed to cross the intersection oh look at that giant building over there with the huge steps very cool and uh i'm able to get across here so look at this big broad pedestrian way little parks along everything and then we're going over the rail tracks here and a highway goes under us so you can see this. Oh, we're heading over to the port proper. Now here on the left is the Catholic University. So they're using some of these old warehouse buildings. I do not know where I'm going at all. I am literally just walking straight out and wandering about a bit. Oh, puppies. Lots of traffic, but very easy to navigate on foot. There's definitely restaurants over there. Check out this area we're walking into. I find living in Latin America to be really interesting because when you kind of look at it as a latin american experience which is which is a little bit odd because it's such a broad area but there's so much shared history and identity that in some ways you have to look at latin america as sort of a single thing and then remember that it's not looks really cool over there but i want to show you guys the, the actual waterfront here So we're actually entering the port. So this is part of the Rio Plata. And uh, these tall buildings must be right on the water. So I want to get over there. In front of us, you can see loads of people walking. So with Latin America, you obviously have around 17 completely unique independent countries that all have hundreds of years of operating independently, but you have a very long shared history of all being part of colonial Spain, or in the case of Brazil, colonial Portugal, for quite a bit longer than they've been independent countries. 
roughly 300 years under Spain, 200 years independent, depending on where you are. Varies a little bit, but that's kind of kind of how it works. And so much of the identity and structure of these countries was formed during that period. And so much of the cultural makeup and the demographics that it's this incredibly solid shared history with only recent divisions, but even during those last 200 years of division, I can't tell if these are working cranes or like monuments to where the cranes used to be. They're probably still working, but they're very stationary. We have a outdoor workout area. These are always cool. I don't know how much these get used in cities, but they're neat that they exist. They're always in places that are really expensive and it's like, well, people who can live here uh, have other machines to work on, but it's great that they do it. Nicaragua is starting to put them in. I do like them. I wish I lived in a spot that had them because I enjoy using them. If you've never tried these out, they use your body weight as resistance. So they don't require weights. They're really safe and simple and they last outdoors really well. Uh, just showing it's like fancy restaurants and apartments. That's definitely housing all the way down that waterfront. What a gorgeous, gorgeous spot. Tree lined waterfront apartments and then more apartments right behind. And tree lined boulevard over here. So with because of the incredibly strong shared history and now that they are independent countries that all of Latin America still shares a common two languages, but very similar ones because they share media, because they are represented together in the news, in, in so many things, because they share logistics, because they collaborate on so many things. Got a little park here. It causes them to remain tied together, much like the EU, far less formally, but unlike the EU, which is made up of, yes, highly proximate states, but places that traditionally had such a massive population compared to the rest of the world that they were more separate than you'd imagine and have worked so hard to isolate each other for so long here in Latin America, there is a very different attitude. And I think the history actually, for the most part, unifies the region more than the EU unifies Europe, at least ideologically, if you are looking at formal legal integration, Europe has it way ahead of this region. Latin America really should put together a borderless zone. Ooh, beautiful interior shop there. Oh, that is exactly my style. That's what I would like. Look at all these condos. So many. I wish I knew what things cost around here. <laughs> I love the gray silver style. All right, we're going to head forward towards the water. I want to get out there and see what the open water looks like. So kind of my point with how it feels being in this super city, but still in Latin America, you know, part of it is this feels like a part of the place that we're in. It's it doesn't necessarily have this really strong, like we left to go somewhere else entirely kind of feeling, even though we are so, so far away. But it, uh, it, it kind of feels like a very far flung part of where we are because we live well within Latin America. We don't even live on the fringes. We live deep, deep into Latin America. This is Zen City at Puerto Madero.
and I'm told there is Uber here. I've not used it yet. Got a sushi bar here. Got a cafe. Got a park on the left. So, while we're exploring, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our travels, because we didn't make a video about them. It is difficult and boring in reality to make a video about the travel to get here from Nicaragua, because we've covered all the interesting bits previously. I'm gonna head over to the park. Might as well walk through some green. Dedicated bicycle way right there. We will take the human walking path. So our journey started three days ago. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So we started on Monday morning I'm recording this on Wednesday, we just arrived. And uh, we got up at like 4.30, got ready, got out to, lots of people out walking dogs, by the way, seeing that a bit. Got out to the, the Nika Espresso. Okay, I'm gonna wait till we're past the lawnmower. Okay, he's way back there where I came from. Now we're over here. Ooh, there's a big harbor park over on the right more park on the left wow just an amazing area can't believe more people aren't out here although there are a lot of people out and it's early so got to the uh, Nika Expresso bus station is a tough word it's a tiny little agent the bus just pulls up on the street so it's a funny funny kind of thing and uh, we got there at probably 5 30 and we, we kind of know how this works, but it's a little bit scary every time because it's also poorly labeled. So this time it turns out that the agent moved like one door over, but all the signs are gone. So we're there and we're like, um, they used to have a, an office here. The office is clearly not open and they didn't open until after six, but the bus is supposed to get you at six and you have to visit the agent to get your tickets. Now, I'm sure if they don't open, because we have a receipt, they'd still let us go. It's very informal. They'd figure it out, but it, it was a bit of a mess. So we were there, we were in a little bit of a nervous panic because there was nowhere to go, no agent, no signs. Uh, but they opened a little bit after six, got our tickets, because uh, you buy them online, but you just have a receipt. And uh, then, the bus didn't come till about 6.30, maybe 6.20. So it was a little bit on the late side, it seemed. And uh, we were off to Managua. We made really good time. I actually fell asleep immediately and had a really nice nap uh, getting over to uh, Managua. I managed to sleep a lot of the way. Um, got, to, got to immigration, to border control at 11:35, and we were on the other side in costa rica by 12 30. no problems at all and everyone on the bus had to wait for us because it was our first time passing through as full formal residents and there's some stuff that has to be put into the system and paperwork issued the first time and so it just took them a little bit longer it was no hassle they basically didn't ask us any questions they're like oh first time as a resident yes Okay, and then pretty much we sat there as they filled out paperwork. Like, we didn't have to do anything. And uh, it was a little bit cheaper. We had to pay uh, the $1 city tax. That is not from the country, it's from Rivas. And we had to pay the $10 exit fee, but not the $3. So instead, most people have to pay $14 total to leave the country we now only have to pay 11. It's not very much of a savings, but there you have it. <laughs> then uh, the drive in Costa Rica went fine. Uh, as always, the bus, the bus stops at Vista El Mar restaurant. We had a nice little lunch, beans and rice, fried fish, macaroni salad, uh, nothing fancy, but it was it's tasty. They do a nice job. It's a nice little place. Uh, and it's 
mostly Nicaraguans that, that ride the bus and Costa Ricans. So the prices and everything are meant for Nicaraguan tourists. So slightly higher than normal, but not, not gringo prices in any way. So that's not bad. And uh, what is this? Yeah. And uh, oh, my sidewalk kind of disappeared here. I don't know where I'm supposed to go to keep walking. This is weird. Forward, I guess. I guess we're okay. And, uh, oh, this is the ecological preserve. I knew that this was here. Of course, I have no money whatsoever. So unless this is free and I can just walk in, just gonna have to show you from the outside. We'll talk about money in a future episode. We can see some of the park over here on the left though. So it was probably 6, 630 when we rolled into the airport at San Jose, got dropped off at the airport. We were gonna call for the hotel shuttle, but we used the Hampton, the Hampton San Jose airport. And uh, a little secret when you're looking them up on the Hilton app, don't search for the airport. Just search for San Jose and scroll down to the to the Hampton Airport because it's fifty dollars cheaper if you search that way. But if it knows you want to be by the airport, they charge you extra, a lot extra. So, little tip, little tip. Ooh, little VIP Perea action, little food. So much street food. You can see it way down. See those high rises behind the park. Here's the preserve. Okay, well, I walked in and people are just coming and going. It looks like we are good to go. All right, over on the right, looks like some kind of built up stuff there. Here's our map. We are here. Usted está aquí. Well. This looks fantastic. So there's an elevated walkway over there. The real views are on the left though. Ah. When I see these, I'll stop and get them. You can always pause and read what they say. Las lagunas de esta región se pueden formar de expresión del terreno con agua que llega de un río. Cuando llueve o cuando hay crecidas de los cursos de agua, y que el agua acumulada en la zona de inundación. Okay, so these are the flood plains caused by a low depression in the earth by and it's fed by the river obviously it's fed by the river didn't really need a sign to explain that so these are essentially estuary lakes is is what that was explaining and so they are a protected wildlife zone oh it even says entrance is open and free Respect the animals. They get priority. We'll go over to the little observation station. I know you guys are dying to see the view. It's the same view from not the observation station, but you know, unencumbered. All right. Okay, it looks like we're on the loop. Oh, cool bridge to something that's closed off right now. There's the interpretation center, I think. For some reason, it feels like going to the left and around seems like the way to go. So there's a whole 
much like a public zoo, place you can go in perfect for students and class trips. If you're bringing your kids here, this would be a good spot to come. Oh, let's start right here. This is also quiet and park-like out in uh, out in the middle of the city. Oh wow. Buenos dias. Oh, permiso. Wow. Okay, I've been walking down the path. Now the camera says it turned itself off because it ran out of battery. Um, and then I turned it on and had 42%, so I'm not sure what's going on. All right, I'm going to walk out here quickly, show you some more of the lagoon. I'm going around this little walkway. Buenos dias. I've decided out of practicality that walking this park, I'm glad I came and did the part that I did, but is way too much and is going to take up the entire morning and we won't see the city. So you know this park is here. It is huge, has these amazing wetlands. I don't know how far I'd have to go. Oh, actually, I'm going to look at my main map uh, to get out to the actual river. But this area is super cool. Okay, I crossed back over and I am walking along the park by the Laguna. Decided it was going to be all morning walking in the park and I was not going to have enough time even to make it back to my hotel to check out. So a little bit of a problem. So back to our day as we explore this beautiful area. Oh, this is so, you know, I love good urban environments and this is, South America is famous for having some of the best urban environments in the world. They compete very heavily with Europe for urban design and okay uh, it's an older battery having a problem i swapped to a different battery hopefully we won't have a problem all right just wanted to show a little bit of the menu items here in the park and this beautiful seating and this glass enclosed seating area like how nice and then you can see the prices there give you an idea of what it costs and keep in mind if you're checking a conversion against us dollars if you check something like xe.com uh you're gonna be looking at a normal conversion and that's what you can get if you just lazily come and exchange your dollar somewhere publicly. Uh, that's the official. But if you get the blue dollar rate, you get way more for your dollar. So all the prices come down significantly if you know how to exchange. We don't yet, so, <laughs> so I have no cash. I have no pesos making do without, which sucks because there's all this amazing food. So I'm told... They really need to be, this is a cash heavy place due to really high fees on credit cards and stuff that uh, basically everybody uses cash and money is just hard to get. Like cash is difficult to get. So everything's a struggle as far as that right now. They're in a crisis. Like this is a massive, massive crisis. It is what it is. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, really good if you're able to bring in us dollars and you're able to get blue dollar conversion or dollar blue i'm sorry conversion uh then you're you're able to make your money go really far these beautiful buildings we're coming in through this is under construction but really nice as well so so our second day so i'm still on the story so our second day we uh we got up at the Hampton, uh, had to get up pretty early. So this is yesterday, about five o'clock. Oh, and the first night, I should go back. After we arrived, we went out immediately. Dominica was really tired after riding on the bus. I was pretty energized because I nap on the bus, but we got to, uh, got to the hotel and immediately went out to the Taj Mahal nearby in Alajuela, uh, Costa Rica for Indian for dinner, always delicious. 
lots of Indian places in Costa Rica that we really like. Like it's not just that they have some, it's that they're consistently really good. Uh, but so that's one we go back to because it's by the airport. And uh, then in the morning, had to get up early, like 5.30, uh, take the shuttle. I think we took the six o'clock shuttle over to the airport, uh, got checked in, no big deal. We're flying Copa and we were off to Panama City. We got stuck in the very, very last row of the airplane. Always fun. And uh, got to Panama, I think like 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock. The flight is under an hour. It was like 56 minutes. We're like, what? To Panama City. So that was really cool. Very fast and easy. We had a little bit of a layover in Panama City, maybe two hours, but PTY Airport is very easy to deal with. So no problem. It's just not a huge airport. And like Costa Rica, it's basically all international connections. So getting between places, nice and easy. We had no problems at all. Our flight leaving there got delayed by an hour. Not huge. And just because of something in Buenos Aires, no big deal. So this is obviously owned by the same place, it looks like. And uh, similar like upscale street food kind of things. Perfect for families out just enjoying the park. Park food. And uh, so we hung out there just a little bit and then we were on our way. Uh, we did grab a sandwich there. Both Costa Rica and, and Panama are very expensive airports. Nothing like the cheap ones at Managua or El Salvador. Those are, those are preferable in those situations. Oh, I think this is my crossing. We're gonna dive back into the city and show more of the city itself. Although this park is super sweet. I think you guys be more interested in the city. This would be, if you're looking for upscale living, this area must be amazing. And I feel like it's not so isolated. A lot of times when you have housing areas like this, it's like, oh, underground garages, drive in and out. You don't have any culture of your own. And to some degree, that's going to, it's kind of visibly true here too. But like with this park and all this street food everywhere, I feel as though if you lived in this really exclusive zone, look at this tree line street, that is nuts. Uh, that you have fast walking access into the city and there is so much street life and so much food and so much everything everywhere, including out here, that I don't think it would have that same like far off isolated feeling that uh, you might otherwise get. I think you could still have a pretty connected Argentinian experience, even living in one of these high rise crazy towers. It's a little bit like living on Central Park, I can only imagine, because it's a huge park area with huge towers. So, our second flight. Oh, what a beautiful park area. All oh, these trees are gorgeous. Both the walkway and this, this treed area. Wow, I'm gonna sit for a second. All right, continuing the walk. Just checking the map and stuff. My gosh, these are beautiful buildings. Even with all the cars, it is surprisingly quiet out here. That is a very, very European thing. Very different than Nicaragua. Everything is so loud, always loud music. If there's silence, people feel, feel the need to fill it at every moment. And here, it's just quiet. And it feels like from looking at it, that driving is very calm here. I wouldn't be worried about driving here at all. Yeah. 
Buenos dias. Buenos dias. All right, well, had to take a little filming break there. And uh, we're now crossing the bridge uh, back into the main part of the city. And if you're wondering if this is a lot more European than it is back in Nicaragua, I just got my first really strong reminder of how much more like Europe this is. And uh, first, I just want to say all the people that I spoke to were very nice, very polite. I was never worried. Nothing bad. They were they, they were doing their jobs. And uh, I understand they have different concerns, different places, and you've got to respect how people do it. But very, very different. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to flip this real fast so you can see this beautiful bit while I'm talking. Okay, we're just going to be walking straight here for a minute so I can tell going on and uh we're walking past uka on the other side this is the catholic university anyway so i'm walking through just part of the city wide open no nothing special i mean it was a nice area and i got stopped by four police required to produce my documents talk about when i got to the country how long i'd be staying where i was staying what hotel was i in who was i traveling with uh and explain that you can't film in parts of the city no signs that would be nice i would i'd really appreciate some signage just so i you know could just stop filming instead of having to talk to the police it's always a little bit unnerving but uh yeah that's a lot more european than it is latin american never once have i had to stop filming in nicaragua officially private property yeah different thing oh no sorry sorry this is a this is a private place we don't allow cameras oh i don't like that but okay i understand it's your place, you choose what you want, but never before have the police stopped me in any country anywhere. And uh, I know in in Europe, they have a lot of stuff they don't wanna show. Uh, so you're always a lot more concerned about it there. Not so much in Eastern Europe, but in Western Europe. And uh, you know, still those those interactions are not generally scary, right? <laughs> just un Just potentially a little bit uncomfortable, but never before anywhere ever in the world have I actually been stopped and expected to produce documentation for walking around a city. So that's, uh, that is a completely different experience here in Argentina. That would never happen in Nicaragua. Now, if you're driving in Nicaragua, yeah, you got to provide documents and legally you're supposed to be carrying identification, but never, ever, ever have I been stopped in Nicaragua and asked for my documents. That's, I don't even carry them when I'm out walking. Here, I thought ahead and said I should be carrying documentation. Thank goodness I thought of that. But, wow. All right, gorgeous area. We're about to cross the road. I'll pick up on the other side. All right, we're back in parts of the city where we're allowed to film to the best of my knowledge how would you know um i tried to ask if it was okay over here and they wouldn't exactly say but they said the area that i couldn't film in and this was not part of it so i think we're okay this to the right is a duana. this is the customs building which i guess this is the main port so i guess it's super close to the port another great park here These are some stunning views. All right, we're still walking. Just a gorgeous city. Things are dripping on me. I don't know where that's coming from. One thing I did notice is that Pedidos Jaw is here. I didn't think that was possible at all, but it's actually here. Oh, there's an apartment for sale right there. What a spot. I'm excited to see these different neighborhoods. 
this is the only day that we're out here in Puerto Madera. So anyway, as we're walking, continue my story of my travels. So we flew out of Panama City just a little bit late. And this is the really long flight. It's like seven or eight hours over all of South America. And uh, it was pretty cool. Early on in the flight, we had just a little bit of clear. Wait for this ambulance. We had just a little moment where the clouds cleared and I gave up my window seat for someone who was very whiny. But then at some point he moved somewhere else as if the plane... Oh, look at this old street. Oh, it's fantastic. So I ended up sitting in the middle the whole way until right at the end. But at some point he opened the window and we looked out and we could see the Amazon in southern Colombia. What is this? Which was really cool. I've never actually seen the Amazon before, even though I've been relatively close and I've been in the basin, never seen it. So it was cool just flying over and seeing it. And then it became dark as it does. And at some point, randomly, he leans over and decides to open the window. And it had been pretty cloudy, so we really couldn't see anything. So there's very little reason to have the window open. But he just opens it and instantly there are bright lights and I look out the window and with no map, no information about where we are, nothing, I instantly recognize Cochabamba and I could make out Ozzy's block from the sky. I could just look right over and I'm like, oh, I'm looking at Ozzy's house. It was unbelievable how clear it was. I could tell exactly where all the streets were. I could see the street where my apartment was when I stayed in Cochabamba last year. That was like the only thing we saw from the sky the whole way. He just opened the window and there it was. And Dominica just happened to be standing up at the moment. So I'm like, look, I was able to show her the city. She's like, what? How did that happen? It was very funny. So, cute little streets. Hopefully I'm not swinging you guys around too much. There's so much to see. Big city, lots to see. Once we get to hang out with Valentina, we're hopefully going to start getting an idea of what apartments cost here. So we can fill you guys in and we'll start getting some meals. Our meal last night, I think I said, came out to about $25 after tip and tax and everything. Now we paid with credit card, so we did not get dollar blue. So we got the bad exchange rate. So even with that, American Express reported under $32 is what was charged to the credit card after the exchange. Because, oh, here's a buffet. Uh, so that's with all the fees and everything added in. No discounts for cash. No discounts for exchange. And it was like $31.83. We got two enormous hamburgers. Veggie burgers, obviously. And each came with fries. And I got a artisanal beer. It was all very good. Lots of food, way more than we could eat. And uh, and if we had dollars blue, likely it would have come out to somewhere between 20 and $25. Likely closer to 25, but maybe closer to 20. It's hard to say. But uh, for a fancy night out, oh, check this out. This is Avenida Peru that we are at and San Telmo, which is where I'm staying, is this way. So we're going to head back to the neighborhood. I want to make sure I'm at least close to the hotel. I don't have a ton of time before we got to check out and uh, we'll be filming more this afternoon, I hope. So the rest of the flight, pretty uneventful. Uh, we did have clear skies over northern Argentina, which was actually incredibly cool flying over that wide flat area in the north i had no idea all the cities are the most amazingly planned grids all through the region it was unreal to see from the sky every single little town you could make out the churches and the parks 
and the layout of the streets and the central buildings. It was truly amazing. I really want to get out and drive around. Definitely not on this trip. Oh, an Egyptian restaurant. That is something I never run into. I mean, the food style is not unlike other areas, but that's really cool. Um, and, uh, I w you know, this trip, we're really here in the city. I don't have a driver's license, so I'm not not tooling around in the in a car, but, oh, cool, here's a technology store. Oh, Xbox controllers, that would be handy. Oh, look at all the doggies. Oh, that's a lot of doggies. Oh, oh, that one's unhappy. Oh. But, uh, <clears throat> oh, it's a place for sale. Uh, sometime when we come back, I want to drive around and explore the small towns because everybody comes to Argentina and does Buenos Aires and to some degree Mendoza. And once in a while, adventure travelers go down south, but there's so much of everyday Argentina that people don't explore. And, you know, I know for a lot of my viewers, for you guys, uh, Buenos Aires is specifically of interest because you're looking for that you know, big city difference. And uh, of course, it makes sense. It's very unique. So it's a very special thing to be able to have access to if you're looking for big city, big European Latin America. It fills that gap really well. But there is potentially a massive opportunity for expat life in Argentina for people who are less interested in a uh, oh, cool old building. Looks like it's been adapted to be like offices though. Looks like it was cool, a lot less cool now. City parking and if you're not looking for the beach life and you're not looking for the mountain life, I would bet that there is a massive amount of very low cost, safe living through a huge area because the population of Argentina is quite large. It's a very, very big country and there are so many small towns, but because land is very available, uh, it's kind of, in many ways, in many, many ways, uh, legitimately, it is like a southern Texas. So if you come to northern Argentina, it's a lot like coming to Texas, where the costs have a tendency to stay low because you can always spread out. There's so much available land. But it's not the most prime farmland, so it's not high cost because you're displacing the most amazing farming and there just can't be enough people to fill it all and so the cost of housing and such can only get so much this is the Simic Photographic Museum Cafe these are all like really cool cafes that I'm walking by Something I love about city life is the huge variety of amazing little food things everywhere. I've walked past a hundred times the variety of food that we have in Leon. <clears throat> oh, these are cool flowers. Oh, cute little doggies. <coughs> that is a vegan cafe.
these streets are really really awesome everywhere so many cafes my kids would love it here i think i need to cross over no just need to So, old bikes. That's an option for getting around the city. All right, I'm gonna check a map and bop forward a little bit. All right, we're on Peru. We're just about to cross this wide boulevard. That's looking into the city, and that is looking towards the port. All right, this street got a little bit more normal everyday city. Guess not every street can be gorgeous. Across the street so we could speed up a little bit. It is warming up a little bit. I'm starting to regret the jacket, but I would have been very sad earlier without it. Lots of places for sale. I mean, it's a big city. There's got to be. I mean, these are cool buildings. That <laughs> would make a cool old eclectic house. I wonder what they have above all these places. Notice no air conditioning here, which it's cold, but in the summer, it gets pretty warm here. Ooh, the Gibraltar, Ale Stout, Stout and Lager. So it's funny, because I've been to Gibraltar for those things. I love the cobblestone streets. They are very cute. Casanova parking garage. Okay, how European is this? Carrefour Express, that is the express shop of Europe. So. That's uh, Belgian, I believe, all over Europe. Those are like our Super Express or AM and PM in Nicaragua. Okay, this is a cool old fashioned hotel right there. We're getting back to cooler streets again. <clears throat> so, to wrap up our travel story, we arrived about 10.30, I think, we landed in Buenos Aires, and it was about just minutes before midnight that our shuttle took us to, oh, honey, dog sleepy, took us to our hotel here in San Telmo. Oh, beautiful apartments over there. 
Oh, this place is cute. I gotta step back so you can see it. That is a tapas place, but it's closed right now. Ah, oh, I was hoping for tapas here. Oh, this place is really cute too. Ooh, a lot of good stuff here. And uh, so the restaurant, so here in Argentina, dinner is at 10 o'clock. Uh, so that's when everyone eats, it's quite late. And we, uh, but we were too late for dinner. So we ended up uh, asking where we could eat. And they're like, oh, well, our place is closed, but there's a place right in the corner. We're on a, like a little plaza. So it was very, very easy. Just walked out and it was like four doors down. So at midnight, we popped out of the hotel. Hotel's very cute. I would use it again. And we ran next door. And we're towards the end of them serving food, but we were able to get it. And uh, here is big pizza. And see the Petito's jaw delivery. Lots of empanadas. This is Argentina. I'm hiccuping a lot now. And here's the Origin Cafe with cannoli. It's Sicilian. Ooh. We are in the other Italy, Matt Martignano Arce, the something maple. I don't know what that is. All right, I got to check a map to make sure I'm going to the right place. We'll be right back. Okay, that's why I thought this is the street that I need to go down to the hotel. So we're walking forward. And so we went to this little place. There was live music just for a little bit. They played a few songs they were just wrapping up they were excellent though so my vibe like very chill lounge music it was it was really really good food was excellent and i already went through the prices with you by about one o'clock we were back in the hotel this is actually i'm walking past penguin random house publishing Hola, perito. and uh And uh, I sat up, checked my phone for a little bit. Dominica pretty much went straight to bed. I gave it a little bit, but by about three, I was in bed. If you're wondering about the time zone, it is three hours east of Nicaragua. So Nicaragua currently lines up with mountain time. And when you go to Panama, it lines up with uh, currently central time even though it's under New York, because they don't do daylight savings time here. One at the S. And then it's two more hours as you go to Buenos Aires. So if you're thinking of it in terms of the US and Canada, Bolivia is in between and lines up with Atlantic time and Buenos Aires is one hour east of even Atlantic time during daylight savings, which is now. So it's two hours ahead of New York right now. It's all very confusing because you can never compare because they shift back and forth. And this is our square where we started today's walk. We went in a big circle all the way around. We're coming in from the other side. You'll recognize the big mural from where we started. Oh, well, that was our story of how we got here and our tour of the port. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Get down those comments. Let me know what you think about Argentina, what you're hoping to find out, what interests you. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'm in the city of cafes. It'd be nice to be able to have some coffee while I'm here. And we're going to try to see some tango while we're here. So I'm glad you guys were able to come along for this walk. I'm going to be doing as much as I can while we're down here. Hopefully I don't get arrested. And I will see all of you tomorrow. <laughs>